Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're live. Welcome to our new episode of Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. Every week we talk about things that matter to Hawaii and we do this with our brilliant school students and their science project. Now, last week we talked about this. Um, well, uh, we didn't talk about my, my lunchbox here, but, <laughs> but we talked about plastics and its impact that it's making to our environment and our oceans. Today we want to continue to talk about plastics, and we have um, a guest joining us today, uh, Zoe Duan from Stevenson Middle School, and nice to have you here. Now, uh, welcome to the show, welcome. Yeah, thank and uh, you know, she's a VIP because uh, she is the winner, she's the second place winner of the State of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair Junior Division. Yes. That's right, yeah. that's right. Welcome to the show, welcome. Thank you. And um, so, uh, plastics, and, and we were chatting a little bit before our show, and you mentioned the, the plastic era. Yes. We're living in a plastic era. Yes. What does it mean? So pl the plastic era is basically our, pr this century, we have been increasingly producing um, plastics and it has been becoming a substantial thing that we use in our daily lives. And we're depending on this plastic for um, everything from um, there our studio right here, we have many plastics in our room right now, to schools, to hospitals, to a lot of different places. and. Using the plastic, we don't realize how much we're discarding after we use it. And we're not going through a process that is able to discard these plastics because plastics itself, they take millions, oh, actually thousands of years, excuse me, thousands of years to just go under the soil. And after they're under the soil, they're still, their molecular structure is still present meaning they're not completely destroyed, and they're still there. And plastic is very harmful for our environment, and us humans making these plastics is harming our planet in a way that we don't know how to solve yet. And my project, which is Munch on Plastic, we um, use worms to digest these plastics to have a eco-friendly solution to um, dispose these plastics using um, natural things like waxworms and mealworms. It's amazing to see that, the, you know, our students here in Hawaii are so prepared and so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe let's have our first slide up yeah. so we can see. Um, we can see, okay, so basically you sent me a figure mm -hmm. when, when you came here. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we, we, the, plastic, the amount of plastic waste which is produced in the U.S. is about 33.6 million tons yeah. per year. Per year. What happens to this uh, waste? So as you can see on the diagram, um, this is plastic waste. And then on the side, at first, only 6.5 is recycled, yeah. which is plastic bottles or like other plastic that is able to be recycled. The one we throw in the, in the, the recycling box. Yes. Yeah, okay. But then not a lot of people recycle and not a lot of people go through this process. And then the rest of it, which is 7.7% .7 is used for electricity production. But that's only some types of plastics that is able to um, be burned into electricity produ production. Well, so we burn it, we make heat, and then yeah. we can produce electricity. Yeah. yeah, but then the rest of that 33.6 million tons goes into our planet and goes into our oceans, goes into landfills, and then slowly they sink down and then they cause harm to our planet. And then, um, and so basically, um, your science project you mentioned mm -hmm. is trying to find a solution yes. for decomposing and recycling this plastic. Yes. So maybe let's see our next picture here, so we can have a look. Oh, wow. I remember when my, when my grandfather was going <laughs> fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually, waxworms are actually used in fish bait. So they are used for, fishermen buy it from companies, and then they use it to fish for fish, but then, in this case here, I took waxworms and I just um, I used research from 
uh, Stanford University. Originally, they found that waxworms have the ability to digest polyethylene, which is plastic bags, yeah. the basic polymer used in making plastic bags. And then on the other side, we have mealworms, yeah. which is used for pet food. You, fi you feed um, birds or like iguanas mealworms, but then in this case, I took mealworms and from the Institute of Biomedical and Biotechnology of Cantabria, a Spanish professor, uh, oh, excuse me, it's the other way around. Oh. <laughs> um, um, the Spanish professor experimented with waxworms and Stanford University experimented with mealworms. Yeah. So, how did you, so this is what you did for your science project yes. at the State of Hawaii Science and Engineering yes. Fair. How did you get interested at Stevenson Middle School about mm -hmm. this big problem that we're facing yeah, today? Yes, so um, Hawaii has recently had its plastic ban, and um, which meant that we were producing too much plastic bags and we were disposing too much of it. And um, recently they took a bill and they said that we can only use recyclable bags, right. ones, we, ones with fabric or like reusable plastic. So then I was wondering why we were we needed to have this bill and I didn't realize that how much plastic we were having in our world and after research I was able to find the articles about mealworms and waxworms and then it just got me started on how to design my own experiment to see how waxworms and mealworms can digest these plastics. Where did you get these worms? So at first um, Petco was oh. <laughs> uh, out of the worms so Apparently, uh, I, ha I was in the fair, actually, and then a judge told me that a senior division project had was working with mealworms and waxworms, too. And I was like, he took all my worms. That's why they were out of it. So I had to go online to order from another company in California, and then they shipped me the worms after, like, three weeks. Wow, I didn't know yeah. we could buy worms online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's have your um, next slide up so we can see actually what you did. So, uh, okay, uh, can you tell me what this is? Yeah, this is. So, actually, the polystyrene is the one on the right. Yeah. That is styrofoam. And styrofoam is used in uh, takeout containers or styrofoam cups or styrofoam plates. We use it every day. So this is material, yeah, yeah. that we use every day. Yeah. And the other one is... The other uh, one is the plastic bags that we use. So we use it for grocery shopping or like carrying things. And because of our increase in using these items, there's been a problem, which is plastic pollution. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the, if you want, the ingredients of your science project. <laughs> yes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So what did you do with them? So using my worms, I have the waxworms and the mealworms. The waxworms, um, I introduced them to polyethylene and polystyrene, and then the same with the mealworms. At first, through my research, I found that the waxworms are only able to digest polyethylene, which is plastic bags. So you basically, um, you put them together, yes. the plastic material yes. with the worms as well, the two species. Yes. And maybe, I, I believe we have a picture about this. Yes. Uh, let us see. Oh, yeah. okay, so uh, this is the container you used, yes. yeah? Okay, so. So it's a Petri dish, and yeah. inside the Petri dish, there's polystyrene, which is styrofoam, and then there's waxworms and mealworms. Yeah, we're looking at the two species, yeah? Yeah, and in this Petri dish, I have 20 worms, uh, 10 waxworms and 10 mealworms, and then I have 3,000 milligrams of polystyrene and 1,000 milligrams of moisture. So what I did was, after I found out um, the similarities in the bacteria in these worms that are able to digest plastic. So the bacteria are in the intestine of the, the gut. worm, the gut, the of, gut the worms. of the worm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then I found similarities in the bacteria and I found that they're able to digest um, plastic using enzyme reactions. And actually, on our next slide, it shows the Bacteria, yeah, so this is waxworms, and inside waxworms there's two types of bacteria. The first is the Enterobacteria aspirae um, YT1, YP1. That's the one in the corner yeah. right, top yes. corner right, yeah. yeah. And then there's Bacillus SPYP1, and these two work together to form an enzyme reaction, um, and it's part of the glycoside hydrolase um, enzyme reaction family, and they what they do is they take the water from the moisture strip 
and they take the plastic that they're chewing and then they work together to make the plastic into glucose, which is for the worms to digest as nutrients, and then they excrete it out as organic compost. That's amazing. Yeah. So these worms basically are eating and digesting the plastics which you put them in contact yes. with. Yeah. And thanks to the moisture, water, or humidity of the environment. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how, how long do they take to eat the plastics? Because I, they're tiny, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So um, waxworms for my project in um, specific, uh, specific, I used them in the Petri dish for 10 days, which is 240 hours. And per 24 hours, I measured them and uh, weighed the changes to see how they were decreasing the mass of the plastics. So and you weighted the plastics? Yeah. Okay. So um, after the 10 days that I experimented with, um, 400 milligrams decreased in group E, which was the peachy dish that was shown for the for the pictures on the slides. And in group E, they were able to digest the 400 milligrams out of 3,000. So mathematically, that's actually they're digesting at twice their own body size per 24 hours. Wow. Which was a very fast rate compared to the thousands of thousands of years that plastic go under through our environment that's still harming the environment. While they're this, hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, they're not harming the environment, but they're going through a natural process in their gut to dispose of these plastics. And you mentioned that what is the final product, I guess, so, from the worms after the, they digested it? Yes. The waste, if you want. Yeah. yeah, so the final product is... Oh, I believe we have a picture here. Yeah, so this is the picture. And as you can see, that's polystyrene. Yeah. And on the polystyrene, there's brown spots. And that's the feces that they, that they excreted after. And you see that the brown spots... But yeah, the, the brown spot is not toxic or anything. No, no, yeah, no. it's not harmful so it's to it's organic, which means it's it can be used as compost or fertilizer, just like any other um, animal feces. They're able to decompose into the soil much easier than plastic and much faster than plastic, and it's not harmful in any way. This is the piece of plastic basically that was chewed yeah. by all these worms. Okay, yeah. so which is the the worms that was eating this um, this plastic the fastest? So um, the waxworms were actually eating the plastic plastics the fastest. So they were the big eaters. Yeah. <laughs> so before my project, I, um, scientists had confirmed that waxworms are able to digest polyethylene. But then after my project, I had discovered that waxworms are not only able to digest polyethylene but also polystyrene. So they're yeah. able to digest both plastic bags and styrofoam. So that's the discovery. That's the yeah. that's the the what made you win second place at the junior division of the state uh, science and engineering fair this year. Yeah. So thank you, Zoe. And we're gonna take a break and we're gonna learn more about Zoe's and her research at Stevenson Middle School. We'll be back soon. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. This is the How come he gets to go in? He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. And we're back, we're live. This is Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech. We're talking about munching plastic yeah. with Zoe Doan from Stevenson Middle School. Uh, so um, we learned from you that worms actually can eat the plastics, can help us digest and decompose this plastic which is 
making harm to our environment and everything. Um, you are, but I learned from you that you're also going to the international science fair yeah. as an observer. Yes. So, what are you going to do there? So, um, the International Science Fair is in Pittsburgh this year, and I'm going as a junior observer. So, it's from May 13th to May 18th. And what we do there is, as a junior, I can't really compete. Right. But I'm able to follow some of our Hawaii's finalists around as they compete for awards in the International Science Fair, and I can learn from them while they're presenting. And next year, in high school and in senior division, I'm able to try and compete in our own uh, Honolulu District Fair, then the State Fair, and if I'm able, then I get to go to ICEF again. And taking experience, experience from this year's ICEF, I can use it for next year's State Fairs and international fairs. It's so exciting. Yeah. So does that mean the worms are going to eat more plastic? Uh, yeah. So I'm planning to continue my project because there's so much to do with the worms. And the worms are only just one little step. Because I've mentioned before, we use bacteria inside the worms. What I want to do is I want to isolate the bacteria strain oh. and only use the bacteria and culture it to make it into um, a more easier way to um, solve the plastic pollution because worms those worms aren't because Before as I mentioned they're used for fish bait and we have a the P great Pacific garbage patch in our Pacific Ocean right now So that's a big uh, floating chunk of plastics, which is yeah So that plastic patch is as big as the size of Texas and the worms we can't just dump worms onto the um, onto the patch and just let them go at it but instead we can use just how like scientists are using microbes for oil spills we can do the same for bacteria and we can use the bacteria for the plastic patch instead of the worms it's going to be interesting to actually see whether the bacteria are going to be faster yeah. than the worms in consuming the plastic yeah yeah um, so Next year, it's going to be exciting then, yeah. but where are you going for high school then? You um, mentioned. I was able to get accepted into two private schools, Punahou and Iolani. Oh, wow. But I'm not sure which one I will choose yet. You but, need to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think both are great schools, and what, wherever I go, I'll, I'll continue this project, and I should be able to um, expand on this year's experience to next year. And I hope my high school will be able to help me with that as well. With learning, especially for the the international science yeah. fair upcoming. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so we had the state mm -hmm. here in Hawaii science and engineering fair mm -hmm. uh, last week, Friday and Saturday. Yes. Uh, you were there and you won second place at the junior division for this uh, exciting project. Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn there? So it was great to see a lot of different science fair um, experiments just like I did and I was in biochemistry which is a category and I was able to compete in that category with some other projects and it was fascinating to see how my neighboring projects and what they did with their experiments and I was able to learn from the first place winner which was a student from Hilo actually oh, wow. and he what he did was he did wireless power um, transfer even though it's in a totally different category I'm fascinated by robotics as well so I was able to talk to him and get to know him better and we were able to talk about our experiments and I made a lot of new friends at the state science fair and it was a great experience what about the judges Oh, the did they, did they uh, you know, make you constructive feedback you learn from them as well? or? Yeah, so the judges were a great help, actually. They told me what I could um, improve with my um, worms and what I, what I can do more with them. And they actually told me another way to use the bacteria as a solution for plastic. They, one of the judges told me that what we can do is we can extract the plasmid from the bacteria. So basically like the DNA when, oh, the of DNA, the yeah. um, bacteria. And we can create genetically modified organisms to have more of these different types of worms. So instead of having wax worms, we can find a more thermal stable or water resistant worm that is 
more able to adapt to um, different environments, we can use it to crossbreed and create genetically modified organisms, just like how we're doing with vegetables or fruits. We can create these worms, and they're also, they'll also be able to have the ability to digest different types of plastic. You're going to get a PhD here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, because this sounds like a lot of experiments, because yeah. you want to make sure this can work, actually, yeah. it can help to uh, reduce the plastic uh, impact on, on the state of Hawaii and the world as well. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you thought of um, um, calculating, basically, uh, how many worms would be needed or how many bacteria, how could you actually implement this uh, in a, from an industrial point of view in trying to uh, actually reduce the impact of plastics? Yes, so um, as I said before, they were eating at a twice their own body size and I yeah, had so 20 twice, of yeah. them and 20 of them were able to digest 400 milligrams in 10 days and if a lot of other companies are already um, mass breeding these worms for fish bait or for um, pet food, what we can do is do the same and we can use these uh, worms to industrialize it and we can use it to solve plastic if we have it in mass amount of groups. But that needs calculation and we still, I still haven't <laughs> figured out how exactly much would take to um, dispose of the great Pacific garbage patch that right. we have in our Pacific Ocean right now. But that'll be something that we can do later on as I progress with my project. Absolutely. Yeah. And so this is absolutely fascinating. It's great that we have solutions mm -hmm. to this big plastic problem. But now the, the solution, of course, needs to be implemented. And that's up to all of us to actually, you know, implement these solutions as well. Um, you mentioned earlier, um, we had a break and we were talking a little bit, and you mentioned, Zoe, your teacher at yes. Stevenson Middle School. Yes. I believe she won some awards at the science fair as well. Yes, so um, my teacher is Julia Sagawa, Mrs. Sagawa. Hi, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, although she wasn't able to make it today, but she's been helping me through this process um, helping me with my worms and everything. So she was also able to win some awards along with me. And she won um, teacher awards. So, wow. so she accompanied me with... She made a good job. Yeah, <laughs> she accompanied me with to the um, science fair and she was able to win um, first place in teacher awards for the Queen Emma um, biochemistry category. And along with me, she was able to um, go up with me to uh, receive the grand prize second place award as a teacher. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Lots of bright, bright minds here. Mm -hmm. But she didn't make it today, but we have here, uh, you have an uh, audience of supporters. We have uh, uh, Pamela Kohara here from the State of Hawaii Department of Education. Yes. She's a STEM teacher. And then I believe we have your auntie down there. Yeah. Hello. Hi, auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, this is absolutely exciting, you know, all these uh, uh, science projects as well. Now, um, have you, um, at being at the fair, being at this uh, exciting event, um, have you had a chance also to get engaged, to talk to the community, to a broader audience? Because on Sunday we had uh, open doors so people yeah. could walk in and see. How was your experience for that? So, um, are people, I guess my question might be phrased as, are people aware uh, about this problem in Hawaii? What's your view on that? Yeah. So actually, I think people, before I was doing this project, I didn't realize how much plastic we were discarding yeah. every day. And although we use it, we don't really necessarily, we're not grateful for it, and we don't know what happens to it after. I mean, only like a small percentage of that plastic is being re recycled, and not a lot of people um, recycle. So after our pro my project, I was, rec I was seeing how much exactly plastics were there in our oceans, in the landfills, and during public visitation day, I had, I had a lot of people look at my board and talk to me. And one of the professors at UH Manoa, he was able to give me some suggestions. And I think that was a way for me to spread awareness for yeah. plastic pollution in our world. 
and eventually, after talking to a lot of people, they sh they're aware of the plastic pollution in our world as well. So using this ex experiment and using this project, I hope to tell a lot of people about how plastic is such a big problem in our world and how you can help to um, reduce the amount of plastic we use. Just like how we had the plastic bag ban in Hawaii, yeah. we continue doing that or like continue reducing your waste and recycling your bottles after use. And that's a way for you to help the planet in fighting plastic pollution. What are the, the top, top three suggestions that you would give to our audience today? So the first one, because um, my worms use plastic bags and styrofoam, the first is to follow up with the um, plastic ban ban in um, Hawaii. So use recyclable plastics, uh, plastic bags, use um, fabric bags as much as possible. And then the second is recycle. Although it's a small amount, we can yeah. still make a difference. Recycle just after you drink a water bottle, recycle it, put it in the recycle bin, and they'll be able to reduce the amount of plastics that go into our landfill. And then the third is talk to people about plastic pollution. Not a lot of people are aware that plastic pollution is a very big problem, but if you spread it through words, spread it through this show, and spread it through other places, we're able to reduce the amount of plastic that we're using in our world. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always amazed that you know how bright the, our students here in Hawaii are. Thank you very much, Zoe, for coming here today. Thank you. And so, this is young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. Uh, we talk about the things that really matter to the future, to our future in, here, here in Hawaii, and we do it with our very, very bright students. Thank you very much, Zoe, for coming here today. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Aloha. Uh